Quinnity, Washington is a unique place to live, a confluence of conservative farmers, orchardists, and the growing pains of progress as the city begins to expand, attracting a more progressive community. A shining beacon in its heart is the Numerica Performing Arts Center, a place appreciated by all, no matter their political affiliation. During a pandemic the likes of which the world hasn't seen in a hundred years, the pack was the first to shut down and the last to reopen. Specific benchmarks and guidelines were required to be met in order for the organization to open its doors to the public again and keep them open. In September 2021, a new director was appointed to help get the organization up and running again, which came with instituting a mask and vaccine mandate for its employees, volunteers, and attendees. For attendees that did not want to get vaccinated, there was the option to provide proof of a negative COVID test within 72 hours of the show they wanted to attend. These measures were received with celebration as well as scorn, and in some cases, absolute irrational rage and anger. It's an unfortunate fact that because of the confluence of ideological values in our valley, that the guidelines required to reopen have caused some conservative community members to target the new director of the PAC, J. Woody Lotz, with their ear. To combat some of that displaced anger, we at Progressive Devilry have gathered some love letters for the PAC, and especially for Woody, whom, in our humble opinion, has done an amazing job staying strong and rooted in the eye of the storm that would have blown any lesser individual away. First, we interviewed Woody himself, so you can get to know him a bit more, other than the man behind the scenes. The man always making everyone around him feel supported and appreciated. Who are you? What is your position at the PAC? How long have you been in that position? Uh, I am Jay Woody Lotz, and the J stands for John. Uh, just my mom and dad had uh, two other sons, and my dad's name is Jim. My grandfather's name was James. My brother's name is Jimmy. My other brother's name is Justin, and my sister happened to marry a guy named Jason. So by the time I came along as a baby in the family, John it was, and everybody just called me Woody instead. Uh, but uh, Jay Woody Lotz, I am the executive director here at the New America Performing Arts Center, and I have been in charge for five months and six days at this moment in time. Tell us a little bit about uh, I'm originally from Parker, Arizona, which is a one square mile town on a Native American reservation, home to the Colorado River Indian tribes, which consists of the Navajo, Hopi, Chimawabi, uh, and Mojave. Um, and from there, uh, I grew up, graduated high school, lived in Yuma, Arizona, went to community college, uh, decided to quit college, moved to Arequipa, Peru, and taught theater. I uh, taught third grade through seniors in high school. Um, but before I found that out, I it was translated to me as a couple of classes, but it turned out I taught 13 classes um, and directed a play for the first time ever with 556 students in it. Um, we did it all in English and then translated it to Spanish uh, onto big projectors so that uh, parents could help uh, be assisted in following along. Um, and then came back from there, uh, went to college at Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff, Arizona. I uh, finished my theater uh, performance degree there, uh, got married about a month later. And then from there, two weeks after that, I moved into affordable income housing uh, in Linwood, Washington, where I worked uh, professionally as an actor, uh, which means I served chicken wings in a paper boat uh, and a whole bunch of brews to a lot of folks. Uh, but, you know, that's life. That's the way it goes. And uh, but I was fortunate enough to do some commercial work and some TV work and some film work and then uh, decided I really wanted to make an impact in communities and their arts programming and really bringing people together that way. I've always had a passion for that. And so uh, I decided to pursue my MFA in arts leadership from Seattle University uh, and finished that in 2019. Um, and during that period of time, I got a job as the tour manager of Book and Repertory Theater. Um, and, you know, during all of that, played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons because uh, I'm a super nerd that way. Um, <clears throat> But then uh, after that, kind of uh, ended up here in Wenatchee. What brought you to Wenatchee? Uh, the job specifically. Um, the, the job had actually been open twice. Uh, I applied for it the first time and didn't get an interview. And then applied for it again and got an interview. Uh, but it was a little more fast and furious that time. I got a call from uh, the board member who was helping do the search uh, in terms of HR. And they said, hey, can you be here next Thursday? I mean, it was like five days. It was like a five-day turnaround. Uh, so, you know, I'm a firm believer in life's an adventure. And so go for it. And so I threw myself out there and 
ended up being fortunate enough to uh, be the person that gets to help champion this organization to uh, its next 21 years. When you finished your degree, did you ever see yourself living somewhere like Eastern Washington? You know, the arts community has taken me from a one square mile town in Arizona uh, to, uh, you know, the valleys of Peru, to uh, the pine trees of Flagstaff, to, you know, the big bright light cities of Seattle, uh, to this wonderful, wonderful valley that I get to live in. Um, and I always find it funny that people call uh, Wenatchee small. Wenatchee's not small. Wenatchee Valley has like 100,000 people in it. I mean, that's, um, I think, like 15 times the size of where I'm from. So, you know, uh, I, I really don't consider it small. I consider it as a, a connected community. The New America Pack is an intimate setting. And, and uh, I'm very fortunate to live in a place like this. Tell us a bit about how the community responded to the vaccine and testing mandate for attending and performing. I have had uh, very positive experiences with uh, people writing letters on our behalf uh, in the newspaper, or writing emails to us, uh, showing up, um, thanking us for what we do. And on the other end, we've had phone calls uh, where we have been called some choice words. Um, I have walked down the street and had uh, people yell at me or stop their cars and uh, give me certain uh, signals uh, to read between the lines uh, without the lines being there. but. Um, you know, you have to move on from it and kind of uh, just understand that what you're doing is uh, everything you can to, to, to keep people employed. And how are you going to keep the business open? You know, the New America Performing Arts Center was the first business to close in the entire valley and was the last one to open. And we only have four staff members. Um, and so when you look at what Broadway was doing in requiring this policy and then uh, the Guthrie in Minnesota, and then Steppenwolf in Chicago, along with 66 other area Chicago theaters, Oregon Shakespeare Festival, the Hoya Playhouse, um, a ton of um, uh, repertory theaters in Connecticut and New Jersey. And there were a lot of places that were doing this. Uh, the Orpheum in Arizona uh, does it as well. And so we just knew that this was going to be the industry standard. And so we just went ahead and followed that. Um, but again, it's a, it's, a, it's a polarizing decision uh, for a lot of people right now, just because it's a, you know, I always tell people it's it's a wild time to be alive, man. Um, and we had some not great reception towards it. And we had some very positive reception towards it, as you would with, with anything. Um, but, you know, we always encourage people that, uh, uh, you know, we, we are business first and foremost. And we have to do everything we can to protect that business and keep it open and keep it going. And this is uh, one way we can kind of help ensure that a little bit. What is your favorite thing about living in this valley? My favorite thing, oh, man, you know, as polarizing as the decision was um, for the policy that we put in place, um, people here still are so incredibly friendly. Uh, I walk to work with my dog, Ginger, uh, every day and people stop and say hello to us or say good morning and ask how you're doing. Um, and uh, people care about one another. And, and I find that to be a riveting thing. I, you know, that we lose that sometimes. Um, so I, I've really, really enjoyed that about living here in the Valley. Um, you know, people are just very kind, very kind. And uh, I, I thrive on that, you know, I thrive on that kind of kindness. So and that has been very, very nice. So here I am, just getting ready to shoot something that's a very important. And I think this is the most exciting video I'll ever be doing, ever. Just, you know, run the mill, man, and get ready to do this very important set shot. Hey, get the f off our set! Oh, sorry. Who are you? I'm Matthew Pippin. I am an official crew member of the Numerica Performing Arts Center of Wenatchee, and the first time I ever performed on the stage was in January of 2009. How long have you worked with the I've worked with the Performing Arts Center since December of 2019, officially as a crew member. How has Woody affected the culture of the since taking over? It's so nice to see Woody take over the reins of the pack. He, he had a lot of big shoes to fill and not having a head, so to speak, 
on this beast that is the theater. It's so nice to see somebody who has a clear vision and knows what he wants to do to push numer the Numerica Performing Arts Center in the right direction in the future. What is your favorite show you've worked on or been a part of in the past? That is like, Asking me what my favorite show has been at the Performing Arts Center would be like asking what is my favorite child. Thankfully, I don't have children. My favorite series of shows is the Hot August Night series that we've done since 2013 with uh, director Jamie Donegan and producer Don Fox. I've been lucky enough to be in all of them and I have them tattooed on me. That's how much they mean to me. That is, they're, they're my world. What is your favorite experience with Woody so far? My favorite experience with Woody so far, he owes me $50. Now, my, he has a wonderful sense of humor. I enjoy his presence. He comes in, he's, he's so kind in the way he treats everyone that works there, especially uh, uh, the volunteers. He's been absolutely darling to everyone but me. No, he's, he's just a wonderful, wonderful man. Not that I think Woody needs any advice from some F-list Wenatchee celebrity like myself, but something I think that, that may none of us ever lose sight of is the fastest way to kill any kind of art or creativity is to say, but we always do it this way. And I'm hoping that that is something that continues to carry on with the message and the performances of the Numerica Performing Arts Center. Woody, we just love what you've done so far, and we look forward to seeing everything else you've got to give us. And whatever you bring, we're going to try to bring just as much to you. My name is Rachel Perry, and I'm the executive director of Auburn Symphony, but born and raised in Wenatchee and grew up going to the PAC and performing at the PAC. And I met Woody in our MFA in Arts Leadership Program at Seattle University. And so when the executive director position came up at the PAC, I messaged him and was like, you're going to apply, right? Because I knew that Woody had the right mix of being a good listener, but also not taking crap from people, which is really what you need when you run an institution. And I knew that he had a passion for social justice and that he would work to bring people into the PAC that maybe hadn't been in as much before or didn't have as much of a say in the acts that were coming in. And so uh, from what I've heard of his work so far, he's exceeding all expectations and really working hard to keep the pack open, safe and accessible to the whole community. So keep it up, Woody. You're doing a great job. And I can't wait to come to the Apple Blossom musical. Woody, in the short time you've been in Wenatchee, you have been taking strides to improving not only the pack, but this town. We love you and appreciate you so much. Hi. It's Nikki Darling uh, with Alpha Media and KKRV. I do the morning show Homegrown and also the owner, creative developer of Darling Productions and Darling Podcasts. And that's mainly how I uh, came to meet Woody when he came in to do an interview um, and sit down and chat for the What's Up Wenatchee podcast. So, and um, had, had this rapport. We built this rapport right from the beginning. And that's the kind of person that, that Woody is. And just, uh, just welcoming and opening, open and warm and loving and accepting and, and definitely creative and smart. And through this 25 minute interview, um, really just came to not only believe in him as a person, but believe in his vision for the pack. Uh, and, and really quickly began to realize what a wonderful, positive force that he's going to be for the Performing Arts Center. And you need a unique kind of person to appeal to all walks of life, all demographics, all kinds of people. And man, Woody is that person. You know, he sees things in a bigger picture. And he has a love for what he does, a passion, a leadership, because he has a way of galvanizing people together. And just wanted to get this out there and say that really happy that you came into our town and are doing the work that you're doing. I'm glad to be working and collaborating with you. Um, 
And I really hope to do some more of that in the future. So thanks. Hey, Woody, it's Catherine from Wenatchee Pride. I just wanted to send you some love for being such an amazing ally to our community and our organization. We are so lucky to have you. And yeah, we just love you. Thanks so much. Hi, Woody. We just want to say how much we appreciate you and everything you do for our community. We've always loved the team down at the pack and everything that they've done for the arts here in Wenatchee. And we appreciate your vision and your leadership. Thanks so much. Thank you. So my name is Samantha and I am new to theater. My first show was Mamma Mia back in September, 2021. And ever since I've been hooked, I went on to do the Rocky Horror Shadow cast. And then directly after um, Sister Act and Quincy, which I am going to be running a little bit late for if I don't hurry up with the video. <laughs> so anyways, um, I first met Woody for Mamma Mia and right off the bat, he was very kind. And one of the things that stood out to me was that he took the time to get to know us and chat with us backstage and, and to learn our names. So the first time that he, you know, called me by my name, I was like, oh, he knows my name. Like, that is so nice of him. And then after that, um, we just had small interactions here or there. But I just noticed that it was always something positive. He just had positive vibes. You know, sometimes you meet people and they just give off this energy. He was one of those people that gives off good energy. And then I got to talk with him more in depth when we had our, um, we had a get together after our last show. And he was just super kind still. Um, but another thing that stuck out to me was that our conversation was just flowing. He, it wasn't forced. He was genuine and everybody just felt like a family. Everybody like was very welcoming and it was just really nice. And it felt like he had been, you know, part of the group. It felt like I had been part of the group for, you know, much longer than, than those few months. Um, so I would say that we are very, very lucky to have him. I think he is a great fit and he's passionate about what he does, which is amazing. He cares about people. He cares about us behind the scenes and also cares about the audience. I think that it's been a really hard time, especially for the arts. And he's just been doing an amazing job. Hello, Woody. Look who I ran into. Another fellow theater person in Quincy. We wanted to make this video to say that we appreciate you and we are so lucky to have you with us. We're thankful for all your support and encouragement and all, you know, productions we've done with you. So I'm very thankful <laughs> <laughs> for everything. We're trying to get in character yeah. right now. Um, thank you for helping introduce me into the world of theater. And um, all men. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, there's there's this African proverb that I, I mentioned in my interview and, and people have heard me say during curtain speeches and I say it all the time. If you want to go fast, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. The highest priority for me was was really letting my staff and my board know that I believed in them and I believed in this organization and that we could really do a lot of great stuff together. What is on the horizon for the pack? You know, I tell people get off the tracks because the train's coming through. I mean, if if you look at what we have decided to do over the next seven months here, uh, bringing in an international act like Pink Martini and, uh, you know, who sings in four or five different languages. And we had people here who were from the age demographics of 12 to 95 years old. And I know that for a fact and everything in between and there's, and, and they're performing and watching people stand up and they're, they're dancing and, and you can feel and, and thrive off of that. And, and I told people during my curtain speech, we have, you know, Andrew Orlfo uh, coming uh, here on the 29th. And uh, we have Kyle Kinane and we have Jay Jernan and we have Colin Mockery and we have Paula Poundstone and we have a show like One Night in Memphis and we have Modern English, um, one of the best bands in the world. And they're all coming here to Wenatchee at the New America Performing Arts Center. And we're tired of 
hearing people say, well, I've got to drive two and a half hours to Seattle or Spokane to see a show. You don't have to. We're here. Like, you know, these, these are new days. This is a new dawn. And that's just our, you know, that's just the stuff that we produce ourselves or bring in as outside acts. That doesn't include our partnerships with Music Theater Wenatchee, which is the, uh, the Apple Blossom musical. We're doing the Wizard of Oz this year. And, and you know, to partner with local groups like that, that's, that's by community and for community. And that's the kind of stuff that keeps you going makes everything worthwhile that you go through and every day like that and to have organizations like the symphony and talking about new things that we can do with them and the ways that we can partner with them you know that's the kind of stuff that is on the horizon here of of saying we're setting a new bar and we want people to not have to go somewhere we want we want you to stay here and so uh this horizon it's a bright bright future here for us and um i can't be uh more thrilled uh, humbled and honored uh, to be the person that uh, gets to champion my staff every day who are hard working people and my board who are hard working, dedicated volunteers. Sometimes we forget that about board members that they're volunteers. And our, vol our list of 118 volunteers, they're passionate about this place and our community is passionate about this place because it matters. Art is a way to connect people. And, and I always tell people, you know, our North Star is always our mission. And so when you look onto the horizon, our mission is to inspire, educate, and empower. And we can do that in so many different ways. You know, we, we also partner with uh, the NCW Tech Alliance uh, for uh, International Women in Science Day on February 11th. We're hosting a panel uh, about women in science and agriculture, you know, uh, and, and that is just a great thing. We're, we're partnering with a community organization called CAFE, which is uh, bringing in uh, another nonprofit from Seattle called Washington Mass to represent our Spanish speaking culture. And what's so great about that is we're providing the facility, but the people who experience these things within the Latinx community, they're the ones telling the story. We just kind of get to help provide the venue for that, which I think is the most important thing. And, you know, I know that we're, I'm giving you a long laundry list of stuff, but that's everything that we do here. And when you hear me say there's a staff of four full-time members here, we're working every day to ensure that this place and people have a place to perform their art and connect. And so uh, when you look onto the horizon, it's a pretty special, it's a pretty special Bob Ross painting that we're putting together here. If you have a message or a story you'd like to pass on to Woody or the pack, send us an email to info at progressivedevilry.com. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated with us. And any sources we've used in today's episode are below or are available on our website at progressivedevilry.com. 